pruning is essential for keeping your trees healthy and productive. A healthy pruned tree will produce bigger and better tasting fruits as there is enough sunlight to reach all the branches. Making sure all branches get enough sunlight is important for fruit development and for a productive tree. A tree which is not pruned will have too many branches that will shade each other. This might lead to poor fruit development, greater potential for fungal diseases and other problems. Dead or diseased branches should also be pruned or they will be used as a food source for other organisms. It's important to cut down to healthy wood. Being too conservative might lead to spread of fungal diseases through the vascular tissues of the plant. Pruning can also be used to keep the tree small and easy to reach. This makes harvesting fruits and all other tree-related tasks easier. Finally, pruning is essential on varieties that are very productive. These tend to set heavy layers of fruits and the branches might break under the load. Regarding basic tree shapes, I prefer to prune my trees in the open center or vase shape. Pears and apples are often pruned in the central leader shape and with the right rootstock it's another good shape option. The modified central leader is even used in some commercial orchards with more robust rootstocks. Nevertheless, when used with dwarfing rootstocks, the trees pruned in this shape almost always need some kind of support. So, unless I support my apple or pear trees with a trellis, I always go back to the open center shape as my main shape option. Young trees are often sold as one year old whips that don't have any lateral branches. To remove apical dominance and allow lateral branches to form from lower buds, it's necessary to cut the whip. This cut is usually done around knee high or a bit higher depending on the preference of the grower. In the following month, new branches will form allowing the tree to be trained in the desired shape the following years. When buying two-year-old trees, they might already have some branches. However, in most cases, the cross will be too high and the final tree will be too tall. To lower the final tree height, it's necessary to establish a new main cross by cutting at a lower point. If the tree has a few dormant buds at a lower height, the cut can be then lower with confidence, as these buds will later develop in new branches. I prefer to lower these trees by cutting at a lower point, although this might delay the tree development. Here's the same tree a few months later. The definitive three or four main branches will be chosen next spring. Choosing the main branches at an earlier age will avoid corrective pruning at a later date. Choose three or four branches and cut the rest. These branches will be the main scaffolds of the future tree.
A well-pruned tree doesn't need much maintenance. This is a pear tree after pruning last year. This is the same tree one year later. The pruning needs are minimal and can be done in a couple of minutes. The techniques used are mainly heading and thinning. Heading is used to lower the height of the tree by reducing the length of the taller branches. Thinning is used to reduce the number of branches and to keep the center of the tree clear. Take your time and try to balance the tree. Small corrections can always be done with a short summer pruning. To know more, check my video on basic pruning technique, available in the channel. Trees that are left unpruned for one or two years can be a bit more challenging, but the principles are the same. Start by cutting branches that are too low, or branches that are hanging from the main scaffolds. Remove all the branches that are crossing or that are growing to the inside of the tree. Vertical branches that grow from the main scaffolds should also be removed. Developing fruit structures should be preserved in most cases, so it's important to be able to identify them. These are wood or growth buds. They are smaller and shorter. These are flower buds. They will develop into flowers that, if pollinated, will produce the fruits. Short, lateral shoots can also develop flower buds. These are called spurs. These spurs can produce clusters of flowers and leaves. Avoid cutting these spurs as they can produce clusters of good quality fruit. If too many flowers develop into fruits, remove the excess by hand, preserving the spur. To know more, check my video on thinning fruits available in the channel. Thinning excessive fruit is important, as the weight might break the branches. When pruning, try to favor older wood, as most fruits will develop in older branches. Nevertheless, some varieties are tip bearers. This means that they develop flower buds on the tips of younger branches. So, it's important to know the varieties you have to adapt the pruning style accordingly.
If you are not certain which variety you have, avoid adding all the young branches. Summer pruning can be a good option in these cases. If you are still hesitant, at least remove most of the growth inside the tree to allow for a good air circulation. Avoiding crowded trees is one of the most important points about pruning. Keeping a tidy tree with just a few well-positioned branches will avoid most of the problems in our home orchards. To know more about training, shaping and pruning through trees, check my other videos on the channel. A few links are included in the video description. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment and share the video to support the channel. Click the bell to receive notifications of new videos.